Hey folks, welcome to the Wealth Transfer with TC. Today I'm going to give you guys a quick update from Zion Oil and Gas. Now this update did come out about 10 days ago, but it came out during a time period when there was a lot of chaos in the markets due to the whole FTX fallout. Now, before I go any further, I am not a financial advisor. I am just sharing information, giving you my thoughts and my opinions on that information. And also, at the stage where Zion Oil and Gas is at, you guys should know that Zion Oil is a very, very high risk investment. And that if you do decide to invest in this company, that you should use your stop losses. For those of you who have been around Zion Oil for a long time, if you remember MJ01, and the anticipation we are at that same stage where we should see the results of mj02 when we can expect to hear whether or not within the next month and a half if they have a viable well or not all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the price currently it's trading at 11 cents uh, it's been trading sideways today but over the last six days it's been trading between 11 and 13 cents its yearly high was 42 cents, uh, which was back in June, and it went from 42 cents to where you see it now, which is 11 cents. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the update, but let's go back first before this latest update. So uh, October the 3rd was a very important update. So in this update, they were facing a downhole obstacle in the form of heavy water influx from the upper zone. After they consulted with outside experts, they planned to isolate and neutralize the heavy water influx by procuring a packer and installing it below the heavy water zone. And also they said they have no assurance that this procedure will be successful. Right? So that procedure was also done with MJL1 and I'll go over that. Following the annual operational hiatus for the next few weeks of the Jewish holidays, we plan to begin operations to install the packer and test the flow rate of our primary zone. All right, so they had to order this packer and then they also have to install it. Um, but during this time period that they were going to be shut down, right? So they weren't going to be doing anything until they got this packer. That was on October the 3rd. And so now we're here at November the 15th. This was their latest update. And it says here, Dear Zion supporters and shareholders operations are continuing to move forward we can confirm that we have acquired the specified four and one half inch packer and attendant tools needed for isolating the lower perspective zone from the heavy water influx that previously impeded testing efforts we anticipate completing this crucial step in the process in the next few weeks barring unforeseen circumstances expeditious DST testing of the primary zone should proceed after that. This brings us ever closer to our goal, never being presumptive. We never, nevertheless remain cautiously optimistic and will, of course, publish material news as it becomes available and ready for dissemination to the public. We continually thank God and our loyal shareholders and supporters who make all this possible. Robert Dunn, CEO. All right, so they've acquired the Packer. They plan on completing this step within the next few weeks, right? So this was on November the 15th. So a few weeks uh, could be two or three weeks. So we're at the end of November. So they, this might not even be installed yet. We have no idea because you're always, when dealing with Zion Oil, there's always unforeseen circumstances, right? Once they put it in, then they're going to do the DST testing, Right? That's when we're going to find out whether or not if they have a viable well. Right? But let's go back into history so you guys understand about Packers and how they work. So this was an update from August the 16th, 2018. This was MJ01. And this is where they told us that MJ01 was not a viable well. Uh, so there were several different reasons why this well wasn't viable. First of all, uh, it only had a flow rate of between 90 to 110 barrels of fluid per day. They also said the drilling and testing on this well was much more costly than we expected. And as of today, this cannot be considered commercially successful. But the most important part of this is the packers. So right now, uh, everybody's waiting to see if these packers are actually going to work, right? Because they did say in the update, there's no guarantee. Right, but here in MJL1 update, 
This deals with the Packers. Every time we wanted to isolate a particular zone to test, we had to install an isolation tool called a Packer, which contains rubber elements. Due to the very high well temperature, these Packers would only last on average approximately five days. When they failed, we had to pull the pipe out of the hole and replace the Packer, which added on average four days. So they would put the Packer in. It would last five days. They'd have to stop everything, replace it, and then start up again. All right. And so my research about these Packers and the further down that a company has to drill, the hotter it gets. So with Zyno drilling so far down, almost twice the average of a normal drill well. But the further down you have to go, the higher the temperature is. So that's one of the reasons why these Packers fail. You can't keep stopping to replace a Packer. All right, so people need to understand that, right? Which is going to cause a lot of delays and issues consistently. So that is the other reason why that it was not a viable well was because of the Packer. So being here, MGO2, we're at that point in time, folks. I'm just going to say this, just because of Zion Oil's history, that I'm not expecting any type of news release as far as whether or not if the well is viable or not, at least until the end of December or after the new year. So I just want to give some additional thoughts. So basically, they have to rely on this packer in order to be successful. And if this packer doesn't work, then it's not a viable well. Now, if the packer does work, it's all going to depend on how many barrels per day. Because they have to make up for all the money that they have put into this project. And just like with MJ01, and I shared with you guys, right, because of the co- because of the expense and the cost to drill and test, they deemed it not a viable well. My other issue that I have is, if you guys remember in the shareholder meeting, they said that as far as space of where they're drilling at right now, remember he said that we were at capacity, so there, there might so even if they do have a viable well, there might be all types of issues even to pump the oil. Are they even going to be able to even drill more wells in that area? Right? These are things that nobody else is talking about. So I'm not really sure if this is Zion Oil's time right now. And if they do not have a successful well, I do expect the price to drop below a penny. It'll probably bounce back really quick because Zion Oil has a large following, but I don't want any of you to be caught up in a situation where it goes from 11 cents to half a penny and then it recovers to only two or three cents. And it's going to sit there for a long time until they decide to start drilling again. And at that point in time, they're going to have to continue to dilute the stock. And a lot of people aren't talking about that as well either because even if they do have a viable well, Right, the stock is so diluted. I don't really see it jumping up that much. But also, uh, you know, Israel's very anti-oil right now. Okay, yes, they do have a change in leadership that could fall apart instantly if you don't have a coalition. And I would say your stop losses should be anywhere between six and eight cents. Now, there's going to be this period between now and the end of December where there's probably not going to be that much activity as far as Zion oil, so it could drop down even further but there are uh, people out there that are buying it up as much as possible but if you're in this position to where you've invested you should put in your stop losses all you got to do is type in stop loss orders in the internet and on videos and learn about it I've already discussed it and talked about it previously and I shared before back in December and I said I wasn't going to be buying any more Zion oil that I'm going to put in my stop loss so in December The price was at 32 cents and it crashed down to 11 cents. All right. So we did see that happen. I did warn everybody as far as what was going to happen with Zion Oil. Now it did creep back up from that 10, 11 cents mark all the way up to 42 cents. And again, when it got that high and I told you guys, you know, protect your investment after especially after it started hitting 20 and 25 cents and 30 and 35 cents i told you guys to put in your stop losses and guess what happened it crashed again to where you see it now so that's why i say there is a, there is value to stop losses you're not hurting the company by putting stop losses in if people want to buy your shares when it's crashing 
Well, then let them buy it. That is their decision, right? But don't let anybody out there convince you not to protect your investment with stop losses. Every stock is different when it comes to that, especially in the cryptocurrency markets because it bounces so much. And so your stop losses is going to be different on on the type of investment it is and also what part of the markets it is because crypto and stock market is completely different. So if you had sold off between 30 and 32 cents uh, around that time in December, you were able to buy three times as more when it crashed down to 10 cents. Same thing when it went up to 42 cents, the same, you could have bought even more. And that's the whole thing is, is trying to do your best to, right, to, is to buy as much as the float as possible, right? But I couldn't get anybody else on board with that. You know, there are prophetic words about Zion oil. It just doesn't mean that it's for now. And that's one thing that I have learned over the years. Just because there's a prophecy about a certain investment doesn't necessarily mean it's going to take off. Because MJ01, we were dealing with prophecies back then too. But it just wasn't Zion Oil's time yet. right? So I've been around the block uh, with Zion Oil on this. So again, I'm just going to say this is very high risk. Make sure you put in your stop losses if you decide to invest in this. And make sure you're paying attention, folks, because... If they announce in the next month or month and a half that they have oil, it's going to spike up, but it's going to come crashing right back down. Okay, that's all stocks. You know, right now, Zion Oil really needs a supernatural intervention when it comes to this well. But at the same time, I have issues because of where they are drilling at right now. And are they going to be able to expand? Are they going to be able to to drill 10 more oil wells in that area? Right. And if they can't do it, you know, is it going to be really viable for them to put a production line in there? You know, unless it's a miraculously oil producing well, it's not going to be worth to put the money and the effort to put in the production equipment. So there's some issues that I have that really people aren't really talking about right now. All right, folks. So that is all that I have for today on this. And like I said, we should hear something within the next month or month and a half of whether or not. They have a viable well. And this is a stock that you're going to have to watch because if it they don't have a viable well, then it's going to crash. If they do have a viable well, you're going to see a spike, right? And you may not be able to take advantage of it. And it might be a while before you might see that spike again. So anyways, thank you guys for listening. God bless. TC out.